So the first thing I had to do was learn to drive the car. And I discovered to my immense joy that it wasn't an oversteering monster at all. In fact, basically it's an understeering car. Even the very early ones were. And what you did with it was up to the driver, not up to the car. talk about going downtown to the city centre. The city centre in Europe is always a vibrant area, but yet when I first came to LA it was strange because the city centre or downtown LA, compared to a city like New York or even San Francisco, downtown LA at night time is still pretty desolate. It really seems driving around downtown LA at night is like being in your own movie. drive past all these iconic LA landmark buildings. The City Hall, the Disney Center, the Second Street Tunnel, the iconic architectural buildings, the old movie theaters dating back to the 20s. There's a real sense of history in downtown LA. Sort of LA was a flat area, but downtown LA around Bunker Hill is actually pretty steep, and a lot of those roads are pretty fast. Hopping over the 110 freeway under them. They're not necessarily the smoothest road surface, there's a lot of sort of uneven interactions from one street to another, so the car sort of gets a little bit of a hop, a little bit of a bounce. There's certain times when you think you're going to bottom out or you're going to catch a little bit of air. The turbo is hissing and popping and the exhaust has got that really, really raspy, throaty sound to it and it's, it's intoxicating. You just want to pedal to the metal and go as fast as you can through that tunnel and listen to the sound bounce off those walls. A lot of people think about Porsche, they think about the turbo. It is the iconic Porsche, it's that shape, the car's aggressive, looks fast, sat still, it's got the wide flares and the big turbo tail. I wanted to do something that hadn't been done before. I didn't just want to emulate a wheel that had been around for 40 or 50 years. From that first opportunity with Brad and Matt at 1552, when they came to me and said, hey, let's make some wheels together. I'd never really thought about making my own wheels. So I think it was an opportunity to really come up with something that was visually appealing and intriguing. Couldn't wait to actually see the final first wheel manufactured and that whole process to me was really pretty exciting. To see it machined out of a billet piece of aluminum 
This is 6061 okay. uh, T6, which is heat treated. Okay. So basically the center forging here is of course started blank, lathed, CNC'd to get the exact look that we want, welded into place, and then the finishing starts. There's nothing other than wheels right. that can change something so radically, so instantly. And as a designer, it's, you always want people to look at something and know what it is, but they don't exactly know what's different about it. One of the things I loved about you guys was the willingness to work with me. I also love the fact that the wheel is made here in LA, within 40 miles from where we're standing. And I think that's important. It was a great moment to actually be able to hold the wheel, turn it upside down, to actually look through the wheel. And then the next exciting moment was we all went down a wheel enhancement and actually had the tire mounted to the wheel. And that really transformed the, uh, the look of the wheel. I mean, the, the wheel did look pretty epic on its own, but when the Uja was mounted to it, just seeing that tire being stretched around the rim and around the bead, and then, you know, seeing the actual wheel shod with the uh, Uja tire, that was just truly a memorable moment. And dealing with you was actually very easy because you know what you like and what you don't like. I think we all share the same passion that we created something that's really pretty cool, pretty special, and pretty unique. It's exhilarating just to, to see this come to life and let's put them on the car. Let's, yeah. let's go drive. Yeah.